Does this mean you're ready to do the video? How about you all? You ready for some good news? What a sweet little kitty. Yes. First up, for what feels like the third or fourth time since the start of this series, scientists are celebrating the discovery of a new form of matter. The physicists at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign who discovered the new form of matter have named it Excitonium. I know that sounds like the name of the MacGuffin of the Avatar sequel, but there's actually a good reason for calling it that. It's made up of particles called excitons. These particles consist of electrons that have escaped valence bands but remain bound to the hole in the valence band they left behind. The existence of excitonium was first theorized in the 1960s, but it hasn't been observed in real materials until now. Excitonium exhibits the properties of a superconductor and a superfluid. The Urbana-Champaign physicists were able to confirm the presence of excitonium in dichalcogenide titanium diselenide crystals using a technique called Momentum-Resolved Electron Energy Loss Spectroscopy, or MEELS, which allows them to precisely track the movements of electrons. In fact, the most noteworthy aspect of this story is not the excitonium itself, but the MEELS technique which led to its discovery. The team hopes that in future research, MEELS will prove to be a powerful tool in the study of the mysterious realm of quantum mechanics. The paper on MEELS and the discovery of excitonium is published in the journal Science. Are you ready for another one? You seem unusually alert and engaged this episode. It's a little late, but nonetheless appreciated. Anyway, next up, scientists have demonstrated a more effective form of a powerful gene editing technique. CRISPR-Cas9, which enables scientists to snip out particular genes, has been nothing short of revolutionary, but it's not without its problems. While it allows for the removal of harmful mutations, it can also lead to the appearance of new mutations, which can have unpredictable side effects. Scientists at the Salk Institute in San Diego, California have come up with a new way of using CRISPR that uses a shorter strand of sgRNA than the standard method. CRISPR relies on sgRNA to identify the exact location where the gene edit should occur. The goal of this modified form of CRISPR is not to change the actual DNA sequence itself, but rather change the expression of certain genes in order to achieve similar results but with no unintended mutations. So far, the modified CRISPR-Cas9 technique seems to be working as intended. Research is continuing with the hopes of bringing it to clinical trials soon. The paper on the new form of CRISPR-Cas9 is published in the journal Cell. And finally, in the near future, surgeons may be able to operate with the aid of 3D printed replicas of your organs. Assuming you're the one Getting surgery, that is, because otherwise that would just be weird. Researchers at the University of Minnesota have developed a method of 3D printing sophisticated replicas of particular organs. These replicas have not only the size and shape of real organs, but also the feel. The materials used in the manufacturing process can be tuned to reproduce the look and feel of an organ from a particular patient. That's not just a model of a prostate. It's a model of your prostate, I, or it could be, if you have a prostate, and if it ever needs operated on. I think you get what I mean. Realistic custom organ replicas like these could enable doctors to plan surgeries and even practice potentially difficult procedures without having to worry about damaging the patient's actual organ. For example, if a patient has a tumor in a particular organ, a 3D replica of that organ, tumor and all, could be made to enable surgeons to devise the safest and most effective way of removing the tumor. As incredible as they are, the team behind these realistic replica organs is aiming for an even more impressive goal. The researchers hope that someday their technique can be refined to construct not only replicas of organs, but actual synthetic organs that could be implanted in the bodies of patients and function in place of the originals. That's still a long way off, 
But if and when that becomes a reality, it would be even better news than these amazing 3D printed replicas. This research is published in the journal Advanced Materials Technologies. And so what have we learned this week? Well, I'll tell you, just hang on a second. Physicists discover a new form of matter. Scientists introduce a modified version of CRISPR that could lead to fewer unwanted mutations. And researchers create realistic 3D printed replicas of organs. That's the good news. And now for a little bad news. As I announced in a video that I put up on my channel last week, and as I also mentioned in a special post that I put out to my Patreon patrons, in a couple more weeks, this series, and now the good news, along with my You Had to Ask series, will be coming to an end. Uh, in 2018, I will be shuffling around and reorganizing my production and upload schedule. Instead of five videos a week, I will be producing and releasing three videos a week on a regular basis, and that will give me time to put more effort and work into each individual video, and also maybe stretch myself creatively a little bit, do some different things that I've been wanting to do but just haven't had time. So the YouTube channel's not going away. My production is not going away. My videos are not going away. I'm just changing the way I make them and changing the schedule, and unfortunately, something had to give, and in order to give myself more time to do things the way I want to do them going forward, I had to cut a few of my regular series out, and, and now the good news is one of them. I know that for those of you who watch this show, for many of you, this is your favorite show of the ones that I do, and for many of you who watch this, this is the only series of mine that you make an effort to watch on a regular basis, and I just want to say to those of you who have come to this channel for years for these videos in particular, Thank you so much, and uh, I hope that in the future I, am, I will be able to continue with the legacy of this show by continuing to produce videos that have optimistic stories, that feature things from time to time, hopefully on a monthly basis, that's what I'm going to aim for, that have uh, positive stories that are in the spirit of something that you might have learned about on an episode of And Now the Good News. So that's coming up in a few more weeks. The final episode of this series will be uploaded on Tuesday, December 26th. So it's not over yet. This is not the last episode. There are two episodes after this. But I just wanted to let you all know because many of you have been very loyal and very devoted viewers of this series, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So just a heads up that this series will be ending at the end of this month. 